I am Greg Wells. I am a record producer, really a musician, and a songwriter, and a mixer, and just general noisemaker. I have worked with all kinds of different artists, from um, Rufus Wainwright to Katy Perry, uh, Pink. I have produced the first One Republic record. I've done all the Mika records. I've worked with the Deftones, rappers like Theophilus London and Kid Cudi. Uh, and I really don't take any of this for granted. Like it's, it's, you know, I don't come from money. I don't come from the music business. I, I really am a minister's son from a small town in Canada, and I still really feel like that. However, you know, Adele was here, like whatever that was, a year ago, year and a half ago, and we wrote two songs in that room. One of them went on her record, and that record just sold 25 million copies. It just went diamond in the States, which is a term you don't hear too often. It's over 10 million. It's still selling enormously. Working with her was so incredible. She really was 21, as you know, that's the title of her album. She was a 21 year old, super smart, wise beyond her years person who um, is funny as hell and it's very quick. So I was looping this chord progression on the piano and she said, can you just, just keep playing it? She's walking around with her notepad very quietly in the piano room beside me. Just, I could hear her kind of muttering and, and I kept playing and then she just said, okay, I have something. I, I don't know if it's any good. It might be crap. Can I just sing it for you? I said, sure. She said, okay, just play those chords again. And I did. And the song's called One and Only. And if you listen to her album, the way she sings the chorus, it opens on a high C, full voice. I dare you to let me be your one and only, which is one of the best lyrics I've ever heard. Um, and she ripped into it and it sounded exactly like the final record. She just sang the whole chorus from top to bottom. And I, was, I almost fell off the, the piano stool because it's really, it's a huge voice. Uh, in so many ways, she sort of is like the new Aretha Franklin really, truly, authentically is that good. Um, and then she was done and she was like, what do you think? And she meant it, you know, she was like, she didn't know at the time if it was good or not. And I could barely contain it. I just started laughing. I said, I think, you know, I think we're on to something. This is really good. But I was dying inside. I'd like to uh, tell you a very revealing and ultimately really helpful story about one of my favorite Waves plugins, which I've talked a lot about, um, the linear multiband compressor. Uh, when I really first started using it was on Mika's first album, which is called Life in Cartoon Motion. It wound up, wound up selling six million copies worldwide. It was a huge, we, I didn't know it was gonna be a big record. And I've gotten, you know, compliments from everyone from Mutt Lang to like Kevin Killen and you know engineers and producers I really have it loved and admired and respected their work for years and I spent a month mixing that record I really wanted it to be as great as I could get it and I will never forget I had the mix kind of built and it was Mika's song Grace Kelly which wound up being his biggest song ever and the mix sounded really good it felt great and then in the 11th and a half hour I put the linear multiband plug-in across the entire mix. And I'm telling you, like within three seconds, Mika jumped up from that chair and he freaked out. And, he, and I, it hadn't really changed that much, but it was just a subtle balancing of, it's what that plug-in does, which I'll explain in greater detail. But he, he jumped up and he said, now it sounds like a record. What the linear multiband compressor does is it's separate compressors in one plug-in. The left hand, it's like just the super low frequency range and that's it. So whatever you do to the compressor settings, if you do nothing, it doesn't do anything to the low end. Uh, whatever you do, it will only affect that window of frequencies. And so it's kind of like super low, mids, you know, upper high end, and then like the real, like, there's a, there's a Waves preset called multi-electro mastering that is what I almost always start with as, as a place to begin. And, uh, and if I play with the, the master threshold amount, I'll, t I'll take that setting, but then I'll, I'll turn the threshold all the way to zero so it's not doing anything, and then slowly kind of pull it down until I see and hear things are getting compressed a little bit. And then I'll pull the threshold down even more to where it's doing too much, 
and it's it's too much of a good thing and I'll rein it back into where it just feels right and it's usually not doing very much but it just does the subtle kind of balancing of like it, it makes it fluid and just makes it sound better it makes me sound like a better mixer I like to hear things sounding pretty mixy from a very early stage I always want it to sound presented like a record whatever that means to people you know to have really like world-class sounding stuff that I can just call up and within 20 seconds of opening it's like we're there and it's and I could play it for anyone we are really at the point now where, where the plugins I think sound as good as the hardware I think there's a slight difference but not enough where I couldn't completely rely on it with you know under the most pressure with the world's biggest artists right now I'm making two records at once and uh, and they're very different records that would have very different settings so to, to be able to have the luxury of like boom being able to call up a session and then all my settings come back not just levels but EQ compression all of it you know when I really started paying attention to compressors being as viable as you know my hardware was when uh, the CLA uh, LA-2A, LA-3A, and 1176 came out, and I just I couldn't believe how good they sounded. We use that on a lot of stuff. I mean, certainly on vocals. It's wicked on drums. It, I can't think of anything it wouldn't be wicked on. I mean, maybe like for the most subtle kind of slow, gooey compression, it's probably not right for that. However, his LA-2A is really right for that. And I like stuff that kind of leaves a big footprint sonically on stuff, and so that plugin really does it. I have used an immense amount of the SSL plugins. I mean, when that that was another moment of like, thank God that came out. It's so musical and it's so immediate and it sounds great too. I love the Kramer Master Tape plugin. I use that a lot. On sometimes I'll put it across the entire mix. I uh, use it on drums a lot. We'll often put it on a vocal. I really love uh, the the JJP stuff and I really love the Chris Lord Algae stuff as well and. I gotta say, uh, his vocal plugin is stupendous. It is, and the effects one is just unbelievable. Like nothing sounds bad on it at all. It all sounds good. It all sounds better than what you had going before. And I've tried to beat, uh, especially in the vocals, I've tried to beat it with other individual pieces and it never has the same kind of mojo. And the, the drum one is crazy as well. It's just crazy, especially for rock drums. H delay, is my favorite delay, hands down. It is wild. With the rarest of exception, it's all I use now. And I rely more heavily on delays than I do reverbs. I'm using a lot of delay, especially on vocals. And there's just so, it's, there's just something so musical about the H delay, it, what it does in a track. It really it vibes it up. Um, it just sounds the way that I want delay to sound, even on all the different settings, whether it's slap or kind of a big ping pong thing with a little bit of modulation on it. I love the lo-fi button. I love just being able to hit that and you get that other coloration. Um, that's usually how I use it, actually. I can't think of another company that has invented such a wide range of plugins where the quality is so high and there's no learning curve at all and you just, it's plug and play, literally, and makes me sound more like I know what I'm doing, which we all need help with.